From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss AI for influencer marketing. Joining us is Ismael El Kudsi, who is the co-founder and CEO of Social Publi, which is a award-winning influencer marketing platform that connects marketers with influencers across multiple social media platforms, serving some of the world's biggest agencies and brands. Yesterday, Ismael and I talked about whether AI is the next frontier for influencer marketing. And today we're going to discuss artificial intelligence role in finding the right influencers. All right, here's the second part of my conversation with Ismael El Quidzi, the co-founder and CEO of Social Publi. Ismael, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Oh, thank you again, Ben. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, excited to have you back on the show. Yesterday, we kind of boiled the ocean talking about whether AI is taking over influencer marketing. And as with all things artificial intelligence, we're not quite there yet. It's useful, but it doesn't do all the work for us. You still have to have humans vetting which influencers, making sure that the content is published and great, making sure that you're doing your conversion rate optimization when you are promoting your influencers' posts. So I want to dig in a little bit more on one of those subjects, which I think is probably the most important when it comes to influencer marketing. It's always going to be hard to figure out whether influencer marketing is driving attribution. And at some point, if you build good relationships, you can trust in the influencers to publish the right content. It's all about finding the right people. Let's go into a little bit more detail about how you match brands with the right influencers. What are the ways that you make sure that you have the right size, the right content, the right tone, just generally the right brand fit when it comes to influencers? Well, first of all, we have half a million influencers in our database that has manually signed up. So we know almost everything about them. But of course, there are many influencers, and this is true, that are trying to cheat the system. So they are trying to buy more followers and they are trying to tweak their stats and everything. So that's why brands need to take care of that. And now with AI, also the influencer, sometimes the content is not created by themselves, it's created by a bot. So that's why this phase is very important. Also brands are considering using influencer because there is a potential negative impact because if AI generates a lot of content, this is a problem about potential misinformation for brands. And that's why it's important this phase. Of course, the technology is helping us to detect who is the best influencer for your brand based on the previous posts or previous pictures, tweets, everything that he has posted. And also we have a lot of stop words or words that we don't want to use. We don't want to use influencers that create bad content or something that is not suitable for the brand. It depends on the campaign too, because there are some brands that they don't even care. They just want to make noise and they want to have a thousand people tweeting about something and that's okay. And there are other brands that they only need three or four influencers who are exactly the ones that they want. And the process is totally different. But AI and in general technology is helping us according to some metrics to find the right influencers. So what I'm hearing from you is that authenticity is really what matters. And it used to be, does somebody have an authentic tone? Does it seem like they're selling? Does it seem like their content's promotional? Or does it feel authentic and organic? And now it's not just even the feel of the content. It's, is the content actually generated by the influencer? Or is it artificial intelligence creating the content? Does it matter? Like if there's a huge influencer that you're working with, Kim Kardashian, And Kim Kardashian starts using artificial intelligence to fake photos of her putting on the skin product line that she's created. 
does it matter? How much do you actually care about whether it is a human or a bot creating the imagery if at the end of the day it ends up working, if they're publishing it on their feed and people resonate with it? The thing with the Kardashian is that they have a big brand. Not every influencer has the same brand. So it depends on the type of influencer. If you are using a big name or a micro influencer, so it depends on that. And also there is something about the virtual influencers, you know, the influencers that doesn't exist. They are robots. And this is very attractive to brands because they provide the opportunity to be full in control of the campaign creative. That is something that sometimes the brands want. And of course, it is an opportunity for brands to produce a lot of content very fast in a faster way. And sometimes that they don't even need to pay that influencer because it's virtual. So it looks that is perfect, but the downsides of using virtual influencers for me is not the solution. I, I don't really like it, but this is my opinion. But the downsides include the lack of social intelligence. I mean, those virtual influencers, they are not social. They don't have social cap capabilities. They can't feel empathy. And that's the big problem with AI. But of course, if something is working and the advertiser is only focused on ROI, that's okay. If you want to use it and it's working for you, that's the good part of online marketing in general. You can use, you can tweak, you can reuse, and you can start from scratch at, I wouldn't say no cost, but a reasonable cost. And that's okay. I think that you have to try. So there's the question of authenticity with the content that your influencers are creating. I'm assuming that there's also a challenge to validate whether their audience is active whether their numbers are legitimate. Are, are you able to use artificial intelligence to sanity check that your influencers are actually able to deliver to an audience that they say they do? Of course. I mean, we launched it eight years ago. And from day one, people are trying to make money. And even when we started and we pay them, I don't know, 100 euros or 100 bucks, they start buying more followers to earn more money next month. So we are more than used to be facing that type of problems. And we have a lot of AI and not AI tools to use that. For instance, if an influencer's database or followers database grow more than 20% in a month, it could be two things. You have appeared on CNN or you are buying followers. So 99.9% .9 of the times you are buying followers. So if your database is growing a lot, we will put you in quarantine and manually check your profile. And also we have access because our influencers sign up into our system. We are not a search engine. We have access to their analytics and we can track everything because at the beginning, when people send us the analytics, they usually tweak, manually tweak those numbers in a very simple way. I mean, using Paint or using Photoshop or something, and you can see that. So now we have access to the business managers or any type of analytic, because of course, I wouldn't say that there are not many people buying followers or using bots, because this is the main problem that influencer marketing is facing. It's too simple and it's not expensive at all. With $20, you can buy a thousand friends or 2000 friends. Well, I wanted to ask you about that because you mentioned buying followers. And when you say buying followers, it sounds like a bad thing. I'm going to say something controversial. I buy podcast followers. Now, I'm not buying bots. We advertise our podcast. We use programmatic advertising. And when we advertise in a specific format, we tend to see an increase in the number of followers. And we have it basically down to a science where we know essentially the number of dollars that we have to put in to get a follower. Now, they're real people. They're listening to the podcast. We can see that our podcast metrics are going up. I'm assuming that this happens and that buying followers can mean different things in different channels. When you're saying buying followers is an Instagram post, that's, I'm going to give you $10. Can you give me a thousand followers? And they're not real accounts. Are you able to validate whether when somebody sees an increase in the number of followers, whether those are real people or bot traffic? Yeah, yeah, this is very common. And you can see if this is bad traffic, inactive accounts. Imagine on Twitter, for instance, there are many accounts that has been inactive for years even. So this is very easy to check. And in the past, I'm talking about almost 10 years ago, there was the follow back thing. So you follow a lot of people on Twitter to get them follow back to you. So this is not exactly buying followers. This is like a marketing technique. Of course, it's like a great technique, but it's not buying followers. But right now you search on Google, I want to have a million followers or how much it costs to get a million followers. 
it will say that there are thousands of tools buying fake followers. And you can see that because those followers come from China, Russia, Brazil, even with a different language that you are speaking. That's a matter if it's English, Spanish, or whatever, but they are not coming even from your country. They are not using your language. And sometimes, like I said, they are coming from China. So why do you want to have a million followers if 900,000 followers are coming from China? And why the advertiser is paying for that? because you are selling them a million database and they are only reaching 100,000. Yeah, at the end of the day, when you think about that, the platforms are limiting the number of people that are seeing your content. So I'll use round numbers. You've got a million Instagram followers and 100,000 of them are actually people, but you've bought 900,000 of them. When you publish a piece of content, the platform, Instagram, is only going to show that piece of content to a few thousand people anyway. So is it a fact that when you have a large following, even if they're bots, that it impacts the number of people that are seeing your content? Like if Instagram is only going to show your content to 3,000 people anyway, does it matter how many followers you have as long as it's over 3,000? Yeah, you are totally right, especially on TikTok. The difference between Instagram and TikTok is that on TikTok, you can only have 100 followers and your video will be seen by a million people because the algorithm works in a different way. It works more related to the context. Imagine that you are watching an NBA match and you upload the video exactly when LeBron made a dunk. So if you upload a video on TikTok at that specific time, the video will have a million views. If you do that on Instagram and you only have a thousand followers, you're going to have a thousand followers maximum views, which today that has been limited a lot by Facebook, it will be 200 followers watching that content. So it doesn't matter anymore how many followers you have, like you are saying. And that's why in modern influencer marketing strategies, you have to boost your content. Your influencer marketing content is like, you are paying twice. You are paying the influencer. And now for me, influencers are not influencers anymore. They are content creators. And then you get the audience paying Facebook or paying TikTok. That's the only way to get audience. Of course, if you could hire the Kardashians, that's another thing because they have millions of followers that are very engaged with them, but that's not common. And even Cristiano Ronaldo, who is the person on Instagram with more followers, I don't know, 200 million, something like that. He has an engagement rate less than 0.2%, something like that. A micro-influencer like my mother, which has a thousand followers, has 10%. So of course, the beauty could be using a lot of micro-influencers to get audience and to get engagement. And that's why we were born, because we use micro-influencers, maybe a thousand in a campaign, because with, of course, with one or two influencers, you get nothing. And now boosting the content, that's the only way to go. Two takeaways from this conversation. Number one is influencers are really creators. And by that, I mean, it doesn't really matter how big their audience is to an extent because most of the platforms are limiting the amount of a reach for organic content. So you need to be able to promote that content anyway. So the audience doesn't matter. The content they're producing does. And number two, that means that we need to retitle this episode, Why Mama Quidzy is More Important Than Ronaldo. <laughs> And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Ismael El Quidzi, the co-founder and CEO of Social Publi. If you'd like to hear more from Ismael, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can DM him on Twitter. His handle is El Quidzi, that's E-L-Q-U-D-S-I. Or you can visit his company's website, which is socialpubli.com. That's S-O-C-I-A-L-P-U-B-L-I.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even apply to be the next guest on the Martech Podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, or you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.